everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Dark Skies. My name is Matt Quinn, and in this episode, I'm gonna do a comparison of the Canon 5D Mark IV versus the Sony a7 III and how they handle night sky photography in particular. So I'm gonna do a comparison on the, the big things that you know dark sky photographers really care about, you know, low light performance, noise, and of course, uh, looking into this star eater issue with Sony. So in this episode, it's all about Canon versus Sony. All right, so I'm heading down to the beach right now at Bruce Peninsula National Park. Uh, it's called the Halfway Log Dump Beach. And uh, the first thing I want to test out with, this, with these cameras is the dynamic range. And to do that, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get down where it's really light and really dark. So I'm going to have the, the bright sun in the sky is, and some shadows on the shore. And the goal here of the test is to just see how much I can bring up those shadows in post to see how these two cameras compare with each other. To see, you know, what the noise profile is like in those shadows. And see how far I can push those shadows before, you know, the image starts falling apart. That's a really big aspect to night sky photography. This is definitely not a scientific analysis, by the way. It's just what my subjective eye says is better so just take that with a grain of salt okay so i think this is going to be where i'm testing out the dynamic range so as you can see here there's some really dark shadows and very bright sky still so i think this will be work out great there's some nice water in the foreground okay so first up i'm shooting with the canon 5d mark IV, and the settings are 1 500th for the shutter speed and f9 for the aperture and ISO of 400. And I'm gonna mirror those settings on, uh, on the Sony here as well. Okay, so now I'm shooting with the Canon 5D Mark IV and the Sony is taking a shot. And it's the same settings. It's F9 uh, ISO 400 and 1 500th of a second, as you can see here on the screen. There. So now, We'll see how these two compare with each other. Okay, so I'm sitting here um, just kind of soaking in the, the remains of the sunset. Um, I've got a few hours until the, an hour or two till the stars come out. Um, so this is the great thing about night sky photography is that there's these in-between times where you can just chill. You just take it easy and you can see here as I pan around, you know, just soaking in the sunset and just taking a peaceful break here and not, you know, just not worrying about things and just uh, being in the moment. And, uh, you know, making these videos allows me to kind of share this whole experience. And uh, that's really kind of awesome for me because um, it's these moments around dark sky photography that make me value it so much. It's really nice to be out here and reconnect with nature. Um, and when I get a really beautiful photo, I can bring that stuff home. I can bring those photos home and share that with other people and kind of share this experience, the experience I'm having right now, the in-between times, as well as the, obviously, the experience I have under the stars. And what I really want to do with this, um, with these videos is, is fill those gaps with, with these experiences and share with you guys exactly what it's like in these kind of in-between moments when you're waiting for the sun to go down you're waiting for the stars to come out and it's just incredibly peaceful uh, you have the water just right now it's super kind of calm up here usually it's mayhem but it's really quite calm it's just awesome there's no one really around it's just me 
I know probably a kilometer that way at the campground, it's mayhem. But uh, here on the halfway log dump beach, it's absolutely peaceful and quiet, which is awesome. So I'm gonna turn the camera off now and I'm just gonna kind of soak in the next hour waiting for the stars to come out. And then I'll be shooting the same kind of comparison under the stars, this time with obviously the testing the ISO and the low noise performance of these two cameras, as well as just uh, seeing how this Sony a7 III performs um, in the night sky. And super stoked for that. We'll see you then. So this is a real-time video of the Milky Way using the a7 III. It's at ISO 102,000, um, shutter speed of f, sorry, shutter speed of one tenth of a second. So that's pretty crazy, and it's on um, S-Log. So I'm gonna try a different one without S-Log and see how it looks. So here's another real-time look at the Milky Way core. Um, this is video. Um, right now and it's pretty incredible it's hard to believe that a video camera can can pick up this kind of light it's it's totally crazy it's beautiful though absolutely beautiful So just wrapped up a pretty, pretty awesome night of, of photography. Um, you know, the Milky Way up here in the Bruce Peninsula um, is just so clear. It's like a, it's the darkest sky you can get here in Southern Ontario, Canada. And they call it a Bortle Zero. It's like a black on the, on the light pollution map if you were to look at that. But uh, an absolutely amazing night. You know, as for the cameras, um, you know, my initial impressions are that they're both amazing cameras. They both take amazing night sky photos. So really, I mean, I feel like we're gonna be splitting hairs here when we're comparing apples and oranges, but I really won't know until I get home and start looking at it on my computer and really kind of like pouring over the images and post-processing them and all that fun stuff. But as of right now, I feel like they, you know, all modern cameras can probably take a pretty amazing photo. Um, you know, will there be a difference maker between the 5D and the A7? I don't know. And if there is, you know, if 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 I'm totally shocked and blown away by the A7 III, you know, um, good good for Sony, I guess. But you know, I I would I'm skeptical that that'll be the case. I think it'll these two cameras will come pretty close uh, in in quality. But you know, as far as the image is concerned the video on the other hand is just uh, it's just there's 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 the canon and then there's the sony it's just an absolutely different ball game and being able to you know film video even though it's at an iso of like a hundred thousand um to film video uh and see the milky way on the back of your camera and have video of the milky way even though it's like not the best quality in the world but just to be able to have it on video is really really awesome um, and be able to shoot video at like you know 25,000 ISO and have it be some you know somewhat usable um, I would, I'm not sure if you know it'd be used professionally but even still it's really amazing video 
So what I'm gonna do now, um, I'm just gonna kinda get packed up here and I'm probably gonna hang out a bit longer and catch the sunrise down at the beach where I was earlier. And then I'm gonna head home. And then when I head home, I got all this work to do to kind of pour over these images and kind of like give an assessment of what I think, um, you know, is there a clear winner between the Canon 5D Mark IV and the A7 III as far as night sky photography and astrophotography. Um, right now, my impression is that, you know, we'll be splitting hairs, but hey, that might change when I get home. So stay tuned for all that. We'll talk to you guys soon.